So one of the first lattice-based cryptosystems is due to Goldreich, Goldwasser, and Halevi, uh, the GGH cryptosystem. And let me also highlight again what I already put on the title slide, namely that these series of slides by Thijs Laroven. So I'm first going to show you the GGH cryptosystem, and there is also a GGH signature system, which I'll explain afterwards. So in both of those, um, the setup is pretty similar. Well, you might guess it's a lattice-based system, so um, the user has a private key, which is a good basis of a lattice, and has a public key, which is a, well, not so good or bad basis of a lattice. And then the next parts should look very familiar after you've seen MacLeese crypto system. And do remember that the basis, well, this B here, is a matrix. Now, in the case of that space cryptography, it's typically an n by n matrix. So in, in code based crypto, you had these rather long matrices, so much wider than high. And here you typically have n vectors in dimension n. And then the encryption looks just the same as before. So you uh, just the same as in code based crypto, you're taking a message, you're multiplying by the spaces, you're getting a vector. And then you're getting, you're adding a little bit of an error to it. Now, because it's a square matrix, um, the next step is much easier. So you're getting, well, the R inverse, like of course R is an integer matrix. So R inverse is not over the integers, but it's inverted over the reals. Uh, and then we're rounding. So this rounding there, that is indicating that we're rounding to the nearest integer. So everything from, well, 2.5 or 2.5 something, so just below 3 and up to 3.5 gets rounded to 3. So you're rounding down and up so that you get into the closest integer. And then the message, well, you multiply this thing by R to make it a lattice point. That's your good basis both times. And then the message using the inverse of B. All right, let's see this actually with vectors. So, well, we have our coordinate system, so here's zero, here's our good basis, making a lattice, and here is, well, a different basis, the public key for the same lattice. Now to encrypt, our message is some vector of length n, and we're multiplying it by v. So v is some lattice point here. And then we're getting the ciphertext by adding some small error to it. So that's our ciphertext c. Then when we decrypt, we want to use our nice basis. So when we're doing this R inverse, we're basically projecting on the coordinates. So we're using, here's the basis of the vectors, uh, of the letters, and so we are projecting the C using, well, the closest lattice vectors, and so those are the directions, and then it's obvious that the V prime is the actual V. So once we have v prime, we just get n back from knowing what v was. So getting v is all that it takes. What happens afterwards is using the public matrix. Now, if an attacker sees this c, they don't know what the nice basis is. All they know is this, well, much more skewed basis, it's v1 and v2, and that makes these long and skinny parallelograms. So if they now would do the same trick, but with B instead of R there, then the projections would be getting to this vector V prime, which is not the same as the V prime that we actually started from. So it's definitely close to C, but it's not the closest um, that is point in there. And so they would be decrypting to the wrong V prime. And when you have the wrong V prime, you're getting the wrong M. So, Decryption only works if the basis is good, and, well, the basis that you publish shouldn't be good. So that makes this crypto system secure. A signature system starts very much the same. So private key is, again, a good basis, public key is a bad basis, and then this is very close to, well, chopped door functions like with RSA, where the signature is kind of the inverse of the encrypt, well, it's kind of the decryption function. So the signature starts with h of n, so we're taking a hash of the message, which would be a random uh, dimension n vector. And then the signature on m would be finding a lattice point 
which is close to this. Well, if you know how to find lattice points which are close to it, this is exactly how the decryption works. So the signature S is a lattice point close to C. And then to verify, this is only allowed to use the public basis. Well, we're checking that S is a vector in this lattice. Yeah, so that you can do with a public basis. And you're checking that the distance between S and H of M is small. So that this is known, I mean, then you know what the determinant of a lattice is and that gives you some information of how far away something should be after this rounding procedure. And so if that's small enough, then you accept the signature. So here we do the procedure. So we have our two bases again. We now want to sign a message. We compute the hash of it. We're landing somewhere in this n-dimensional space. Then we're finding the closest lattice point to it. That's this S here. And then to verify, we use the public basis to check that S is actually a lattice point. And then we verify that this distance between C and S is small. So that much is fine. This is a function signature system. So if you have, um, if you know the secret key, you will produce valid signatures. If you don't know the secret key, then similar to the GJH decryption, you will be producing this lattice point rather than that lattice point. And then you, uh, if the parameters are chosen the right way, then it would fail on this quantity. So the distance between the signature, the well, purported signature down here, and the hash of the message, the C, would be just too large. However, there's a problem with GJH signatures. Not with one signature, but once you see a lot of them. So let's see what's happening there. So when you want to break the scheme, this is what you see. You're getting some signature on some message. You might be able to shoot the message or you're just getting some random signatures. And actually for this one, it's enough if you're getting signatures on random messages. You don't know the green bases, you only know the blue bases. But even that doesn't matter for the attack. Let's focus on what we actually learn. We learn the pair C and S, and we know that that's a short distance away. So let's just, well, enter this as a data point here. So instead of doing S to C, we're doing zero with the same direction. And then we get another signature here. So again, the hash of the message giving C, and then the signature part S. So we put a dot there. And another dot, another dot, and another dot, and another few dots, and you start seeing something. Now, this looks like the same parallelogram that you see here. This is not the long and skinny one that you know from the public basis. This looks like the same shape as the secret basis. So this thing there in well, okay, it's not just two dimensions, but in general, this is called the fundamental parallel pipette. And the, uh, the property is that for the basis, you're going halfway, so 0 0.5 in each direction. So plus 0 0.5, minus 0 0.5, and also plus and minus here. Well, of course, those are the 0 0.5 that you're getting from the rounding, because the way that the signature worked is you're taking something which is near the lattice at most one half in each direction. And so the difference between the C and the S will fall into this parallel pipette, and then you're getting enough signatures and you actually see what the direction is. So there's a paper saying called Learning Parallel Pipette, which goes exactly um, through this attack. And now this is the kind of brutal version where you just wait till you have enough that you kind of get stunned by it, but you can actually do it with somewhat few of those. So the DGA signature scheme is not secure. We have a problem there that with more and more signatures you leak something. The GGH encryption system doesn't have this problem because, well, if you encrypt something, you know what E you put in there. And you put a small E in there, but it's not guaranteed to be small in the same sense as here, where you're learning the directions, you just put in something which is sufficiently close that you can hope that the decryption will work. So this is really a problem because the way that the signature generated is giving away exactly something about the shape of the good basis. 